All right. So um, this is a this problem is uh, on the honors worksheet, um, but it's not on the conceptual physics worksheet. However, it's actually appropriate for both classes. It's a great problem. Um, hope you enjoy it. It's a uh, billiards player wants to shoot a 0.16 kilogram eight ball into the side pocket. Now, that's always risky because you get the cue ball in the pocket and you lose. <laughs> so to win the game without scratching, uh, she goes for a draw shot and she makes the, point, the cue ball go backwards after the collision with a velocity of 0.07 meters a second after striking the eight ball. That's a cool shot. Um, I'm not very good at that. <laughs> anyway... If the cue ball traveled towards the eight ball at an initial speed of 0.35 meters per second, how fast is the eight ball traveling? Well, let's just try to understand the situation first. Uh, we've got an eight ball that's just chilling. It's just sitting there. Okay, and this is before the collision. And it's essential you draw a diagram before the collision and another diagram after the collision. I'll make those two before, and I'll clone them, and I'll make these two after, okay? And let's try to wrap our brain around the situation. Um, what we're really talking about here is, okay, this is the eight ball, this is the eight ball, this is the Q, and that's the Q, the white ball. So before the collision, the Q ball is moving. The eight ball is not, right? And it says she makes the Q ball travel backwards after the shot. So after contact, of course, the cue ball's got to move backwards. Oh, that's a cool shot. And the eight ball will move, hopefully, into the pocket. And you win, right? So, um, cool. This is after the collision. So, eight ball is not moving before the collision, but we know that P total, momentum total before, has to equal momentum total after. And this is a beautiful vector relationship, right? It's a vector equation. So, let's think about it as vectors. Um, the cue ball's momentum is the only momentum before the collision. It's going to the right. Okay? So this is mass of the cue ball, velocity of the cue ball before the collision. Right? And we happen to know that. I'm just going to label it P, Q, before. It's a little small, but hopefully you can read that. Okay? And this vector has to be equal to the total momentum after. Well, the total momentum after consists of cue ball moving to the left and the eight ball moving to the right. So the momentum of the cue ball after plus the momentum of the eight ball after the collision has to equal this vector. So the only way that's possible is if the eight ball's momentum is it's to the right, eight ball's momentum has got to be to the right, but it has to be more than the cue ball's momentum before. So this red vector is the momentum of the eight ball after the collision, and this vector has to add to the cue ball's momentum so I'm going to place these two red vectors head to tail. This is momentum 
of the cue ball after, right? So the two red vectors, the two momentums after, have to add to the cue ball's momentum before the collision. And that the reason that's, that has to be true is because the total momentum before has to equal the total momentum after. The only momentum before is the cue ball. The momentum after is two objects, the cue ball and the eight ball. So the two objects' momentums after the collision has to equal the momentum of the cue ball before the collision. In other words, the total momentum before the collision has to equal the total momentum after the collision. Um, anyway, the, the problem's almost done now. Uh, we just need amounts. Um, every, every ball has the same mass. And let's just put what we know, put what we don't know. Um, it says the cue ball before is moving 0.35 meters per second. So it's 0.35 times a mass of 0.16 kilograms, right? I'm going to leave units out, okay? Um, the cue ball after is moving, it says negative. I'm not going to worry about the negative, dude. I'm just going to put mass of 0.16 and its velocity, its, well, its speed, is going to be 0 0.07. Because my arrow already shows that the cue ball after is moving in the opposite direction. I've already accounted for the negative. I don't need to do it again. Um, the eight ball has a mass of 0.16. And I know everything else, so that must be, I'm looking for the velocity of the eight ball after the collision as the eight ball goes in the pocket. Okay? Um, so it looks like the 0.35 and times the 0.16 has to add to 0.07 times 0.16. Those vectors must add together. Sorry, I said that wrong. Those vectors do not add together. The magnitude of the PQ before, the length of that arrow, and the length of the PQ after has to equal the length of my red vector. In other words, the length of this vector that I'm highlighting plus the length of this vector, just the magnitudes I'm talking about, has to equal the length of this vector, just from my vector diagram. So I got equals yeah, 0.16 times velocity of the eight ball. And let me rearrange stuff. I'm just going to divide both sides by 0.16 too. So I'll write velocity of the eight ball is going to be 0.35 times 0.16 plus 0.07 times 0.16. And all of that is going to be divided by 0.16. So I can cancel this one, this one, this one, right? So the velocity of the eight ball is going to be 0.35 plus 0.07, right? So in other words, the velocity of the eight ball, let's see what that comes out to be. Actually, I could do that in my head. It's going to be 0.42, right? So the velocity of the eight ball is going to be 0.42 uh, meters per second. Those are velocities. Mass cancels out of this equation. Those are kilograms. So the kilograms cancels out. I'm adding meters per second to meters per second. So my units are correct. This is meters per second. And um, this is the speed of eight ball as... It flies into the pocket, and hopefully we win that game of billiards. All right. Um, thanks for watching. That's a pretty cool problem. Have a good day.